Hello everybody. Uh, today uh, our topic is Cloud RAN, which is one of the hottest topics uh, these days uh, in the telco world. Since uh, we are now moving towards from a conventional RAN architecture to a cloud based architecture as we have moved uh, to cloud in a number of uh, you can say network entities uh, before. But Cloud RAN uh, is kind of a new, not a, as a concept, why it's not uh, new. But in terms of implementation uh, and the flexibility that is offering it now is uh, pretty massive. And just want to discuss how it has evolved here and what would be the, you can say, use cases which Cloud RAN can use. And one thing which I believe uh, firmly is that Cloud RAN uh, will also be one of the key, uh, you can say, players uh, in the future when it comes to investments uh, in network infrastructure as we move from a conventional uh, RAN uh, architecture to a cloud-based uh, architecture. And similar things have happened uh, in the core where we have uh, a cloud-based core uh, already function in many networks. So to have a background, uh, first look at the evolution. So we, uh, what I've done is that uh, I have made a simple, uh, you can say a line line uh, it's a timeline uh, so if you can draw an arrow like this so what we'll see is that in our 2g uh, setup for gsm or any other 2g technologies what we had was we had an all-in-one uh, bts for example we had a digital unit uh, which we call now a baseband and then we had an rf unit which converted those uh, digital signals into the rf modulated them into rf and then these were placed in the same same room or same BTS room and then through cables that went to the antenna. So there were long cables in the BTS room uh, going towards the antenna mast. So you can see that in one unit we have the digital functions and the radio functions combined. Then when we came to 3G and uh, partly 4G as well, these uh, functions were distributed. So the baseband was uh, in one uh, section and then we used remote radio units which were uh, linked through uh, a fiber link or other standardized links towards a remote radio unit. So we could have long distances, not that long, but around uh, you can say one kilometer, uh, even in some cases more than two kilometers between the baseband and the remote uh, radio unit. So we, they kind of decoupled it from each other. So the RF unit was a separate unit and the digital unit or the baseband was a different separate unit. And we have seen similar uh, implementations in 5G as well where we have baseband uh, with all the processing uh, capabilities and then we have the RF units so which uh, have the uh, modulation and other uh, areas integrated into it. Now then we, after this we come to the concept of uh, cloud RAN. Now what happens in cloud RAN? The first thing uh, which is the most important one is that in these two uh, stages, the software and hardware were combined. So you could not, uh, you can say, pull them apart that you have a separate software and you have a separate hardware. It was integrated into each other so you cannot pull software from one entity and put that software into an off-the-shelf uh, processing uh, equipment and then make your uh, digital unit. Now, in the concept of Cloud RAN, what uh, has been done is that the hardware and the software have been separated. So, what you can do is that you can pick up, a, uh, uh, you can say, a processing device which gives you enough uh, capabilities and then put the software uh, onto it to uh, have a virtualized function of your uh, baseband capabilities. And this is where your service-based architecture uh, comes into play or your cloud native uh, architecture uh, comes into play to pull this uh, cloud, uh, you can say separation of hardware and software uh, between each other. Now what you can uh, also do in this thing is that where you have large distances uh, between uh, the uh, remit, remit RRU and the baseband. Now you can pull it up to 20 kilometers and once you have distributed the software and the hardware, now you can increase your processing capability 
and put the same software on top of it. So what you can do is that you can put uh, you, either the CSP can make large data centers where they have a huge amount of uh, processing capabilities and they make a huge uh, baseband capability and then uh, from that using long uh, range uh, fiber connections or other standardized connections provide services to different areas. What advantage it does is its flexibility, scalability and also uh, efficient resource usage. So and what we mean in terms of scalability and flexibility is that, for example, if you're going to a stadium and you want to provide services to that stadium for a particular match, so you have your uh, Super Bowl or you have your IPL or you have any other uh, matches, in that, or if you have a Champions League match uh, in, in any of the stadiums, what you can do is that you can pool in capacity from that baseband data center, use a fiber, put your, uh, your radios, your already radios have in the stadium, just plug them together, give that extra capacity. Once the avenue or the uh, arena is not in use, you put that capacity back to somewhere else. So you can see that you have flexibility and scalability. And in terms of efficiency is that often in many areas, you have uh, a site which is for coverage, but the resources are not being used that much. But in some of the areas, you have a lot of uh, users in that area. So you have to add more capacity into it. But in this case, when you have your basement capacity in a data center, you can pick and choose where you provide coverage, where you provide capacity, while you're not wasting your processing uh, capacity. Also, another use case for CloudRan is your enterprise customers, that you can move your data center closer uh, so you can move your whole RAN architecture closer to your end user and then of course provide better latency services, better uh, user experience because the distances between your RAN is far less from your end user than it would have been if you are providing from a conventional uh, RAN architecture. So these are the few things uh, which I wanted to introduce you uh, in terms of the Cloud RAN. It is a good introduction, but definitely in this series uh, of Cloud RAN, we will go further into details. And now as we move on uh, onto this uh, on, on my channel, I will have separate discussions. So this is our Cloud RAN, uh, RAN stream. I have a, a stream for network slicing and I will be introducing a stream for Open RAN and also other uh, 5G optimization services. Please uh, subscribe uh, to my channel. Uh, please like the video, leave your comment. And if you have any more uh, ideas, any more uh, queries, please you can send me uh, a message on my LinkedIn or you can definitely uh, leave uh, a comment. Thank you so much and see you next time.